What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Starting a little bit of a fun, well I'm in the middle of it, but starting a video series on a fun little project. Hopefully it's a one or two video deal here. What I'm doing is I've got a log splitter that has engine issues and I've decided it's just not worth fixing. It's got an old, it's way out there with that robin's egg blue colored engine on it. It's got an old Tecumseh on it and I think it's a, an HH100 or 140, real big one. Uh, but it's got issues and the parts are very expensive on that in particular because a lot of them are obsolete. So what the owner has decided to do and what I think is the next best thing is I've got an 8 horsepower Honda here that runs and it's going to be a lot better engine on that. The problem is it's got a reduction gearbox built in and the problem there is I can't just remove this portion because there's bearings and seals and gears behind here. Um, so what I opted to do is from Amazon, for $50 I got the factory cover plate with a seal and that's going to give us a standard one-to-one -one crankshaft sticking out right there. So to start the video, we're going to go ahead and get this replaced. So here's what we're looking at inside the engine. This thing has a counter balance shaft, which I'm surprised by. I didn't realize it was going to have that. And an oil pump. Pretty neat. So you can see why this cover wasn't going to work, because we've got uh, no seal here, no seal here. We've got some through holes here and there, and that's not so good. Now the only problem I foresee is this isn't a standard crankshaft sticking out, it's splined. And so I need to look and see if it's possible to get a splined adapter of some sort to get us to a standard keyed um, crankshaft to attach our sprocket to to run the log splitter. Uh, this is what came off of there. Little splined adapter to a gear and I suppose I could have someone throw this on a lathe, depending on what this smooth diameter is here, and turn that down and then cut a keyway in it. It's a little thin to do that, but I'm guessing there's some sort of an adapter available, so I just need to look into that. But anyway, at this point, I'm just going to wipe out any sludge. I did drain the oil, obviously, before starting today. I'm going to wipe out any sludge in the bottom here, just to do our best to kind of clean that out. But this engine looks very good, so I'm not too concerned. And actually, the gasket surface looks really good, too. Peeled off pretty cleanly. So I'm going to open up our new cover, and I'll show you the differences. So you can see here, instead of a through hole... Actually, I, I take that back. The... Uh, Counterbalance support is not a through hole. So those are identical, bearing, bearing. But here we had a through hole where 
one of our gears on the reduction road, and that's now non-existent. We've got the same support for the camshaft. We get ourselves a new governor gear, and it's actually a little bit different. It's got three weights instead of two. I've never seen a three-weight governor gear. Interesting. Uh, new bearing here. Looks a little bit beefier. I hope the diameters are the same. I'm going to double check that because that actually looks bigger. Uh, so we may need to swap some bearings around and things. And then a seal where here we didn't have a seal before. So let me do some measuring and figuring and I'll give you an update here in just a second. So after some digging, <clears throat> here's what I have decided to do. I'm not 100% set on everything, but I at least have the, the start of what we're going to do. What I have found is there's a bearing, so this is a 1.8, I believe it is, or 1.18 uh, ID, but the OD of this bearing is much larger. It's uh, The part numbers on these are 6206 versus 6207, and so this entire bearing is bigger on the new cover, bigger OD, bigger ID. What I would like to do There'd be an option to switch the crankshaft out to a standard crankshaft. Not a ton of work, but it is additional labor. I'm trying to keep the cost down for the customer here. And there's a variance in crankshafts. You don't really know if you're going to get the right one because I can't figure out exactly what model number I've got. I know it's a GX240, but there are different prefixes to that number that I can't find anywhere. And I don't want to risk going to all that work and getting the wrong crankshaft because there's a couple options that are about $150, and then there are a few that are over $300. And so that's quite a bit, more work and more money. So what I would like to do is, because this engine ran yesterday, I don't want to tear it apart any further. I'd like to try and use the original crankshaft that's in it, and then I would like to use our new cover, and I found a bearing that has the original ID with the new cover OD. It's a 6306, I believe, was the number. I'll have to double check on that. Uh, and I'll put that in the description if I remember as well. So what we're going to do is we'll knock out the new bearing, put the other new bearing in that has the correct size for this crankshaft, and then the only thing left is figuring out how to adapt. I didn't find a spline adapter yet, but I'm going to do some more looking and hopefully find something. But we need a way to adapt the splined gear to a standard um, crankshaft or to the sprocket that we're going to use on the log splitter, and I'll take you out and show you that. But for now, what I'm going to do is just make sure that the rest of the cover fits. So we're going to have far too large of a hole in the bearing, but we just want to make sure that everything else fits and lines up and is correct. And if that's the case, I'll get the bearing ordered. And with that, we'll be able to put that bearing in and seal things up. And then all we're worried about is getting this adapted to our sprocket. So stay tuned. Okay, so here's what we got. It does fit. Went on with just a little bit of wiggling. And of course, we know that this bearing is far too large. And we're going to need a new seal as well. But at the cost of a, about a $20 bearing and 
maybe a $10 seal or less, I think this will be the way to go. We're going to have not much to attach to here, so that's going to be a little bit interesting. Um, but I need to kind of set it aside and think about it for a little bit. Otherwise, that's it for now. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next video.